Hello, boys and girls. Are you ready for another day of magnets? I hope you are. We are exploring magnets today still, and we are talking about how magnets interact with one another. So today we're going to learn about where magnets are in our world. But before we do that, let's review what we've already learned. So magnets, what do we already know? Well, we know that there are many different types. Look at all these types. We have wand magnets, bar magnets, horseshoe magnets, donut magnets, my personal favorite. And there are more than just this. So we know that they come in different shapes, different sizes, and different colors. What are some characteristics of magnets? Well, magnets are usually made of iron. We also know that magnets can attract some materials, not all, we learned that in our lab, but some. We know that they can also repel other magnets, meaning they're going to push away from those magnets. We also know that magnets are going to have two magnetic poles. We can see the ones labeled here on our bar magnet, north and south. So let's focus in on those poles. Hmm, every magnet will have at least one north pole and one south pole. Usually the blue end of a magnet is south and the red is north, but not all magnets are blue and red. So we have to keep that in mind. Sometimes they're labeled and sometimes they're not. We have to do some experimenting to figure out which one is which. So when two magnets are close, they will create a pulling or a pushing force on one another. That is a magnetic force. It's pretty cool. We just learned about forces and they connect perfectly to magnets. So these forces are strongest at the ends of the magnet. So you can see here that the force is strong by the south and the north end, not as much towards the middle. Okay, that's true of all magnets. The poles are the strongest part, okay, where the forces are the strongest. The two ends of a magnet are known as the north pole and the south pole. So same poles repel. That means if you try to put two magnets together with the same poles toward one another, like north and north or south and south, the magnets are going to push away from each other. We say that they repel. So repel is a push. In this picture, as we said, north is, is near north, and so they are repelling or they're pushing away from each other. Different poles or opposite poles will attract. So if you put two magnets together with different poles pointing towards one another, the magnets are going to pull towards each other. They say they attract. In this picture, we have a north and a south. They are opposite, so they're going to attract. They're going to be pulled together. So this brings us to our topic for today, boys and girls, which is that magnets are everywhere. No, seriously. They are. They're everywhere in the world around us. It's pretty awesome once you realize so I bet you recognize a few of these things. Magnets are in tons of kids' toys. So if you look at the one right above me, that's a dart board. And if you throw those little darts, they're going to stick to the board. And the reason they're going to stick to the board in this game partic in particular is that that dart board is magnetic. And if you look at the end of the dart, it's not pointy like some darts are. It has a magnet in there. So it's going to attract to the dart board. Pretty cool. This woolly willy one was around when I was little. Have you seen it before? Maybe. So you use that little red tool down here. It's almost like a pen or a pencil. It doesn't actually write, but it has a magnet in it. And then you can move those iron fillings to make him have different beards or different hairstyles or a unibrow, whatever you want. It's pretty fun. This fishing game, you've maybe played this before when you were little. Um, they have um, fishing rods, and in the bottom of the fishing rod, where the line comes down, there's a magnet. And you can actually see it in this picture, but in some of the fish's mouths, well, in all of theirs, but some of them have them open, you can see a tiny little circular magnet. So the fishing rod magnet is going to attract to the magnet in the fish's mouth, and that's going to allow you to pull that fish up and get a point or whatever you need to do to win the game. Um, these other two building um, tools, I think these are magnetiles maybe, um, are used um, by kids all the time and they obviously use magnetic or magnets in them to um, allow kids to build. Um, another one that you probably already know is just to hold things in place. Whether it's your refrigerator or your teacher's whiteboard, there are magnets that help you just hold things in place, whether it's, you know, paper or um, a receipt um, or a business card. Uh, magnets help us 
keep things where we want to keep them. I know I have a ton on my filing cabinet right next to me. Electric appliances. This one might be new to you. So electric appliances actually do use magnets and they're called electromagnets and that helps them run. We're going to learn more about electromagnets tomorrow. It's pretty awesome. Headphones, earbuds, speakers, again, these all have magnets inside them. You probably didn't even realize. These two are electromagnets and they allow you to hear. The dollar bill acceptor. This one blew my mind. I was so, so impressed by this. So dollar bills, right, actually have iron in the ink that's printed onto the bill. So that means that when they go through that little bill acceptor, there's a magnet in there to recognize whether or not it has that iron in it. And if there's that attraction between the magnet inside the machine and the iron um, ink, then they will accept the dollar because they know it's real. But if it's not, they, they will not accept your dollar because they do not think it's real. Credit card readers and credit cards. So you can see right here that black strip on credit cards, that is a magnet. And when you swipe your card, there's also a magnet inside of that card reader that will pull your information um, to allow you to make that purchase. But it is that magnet, those magnets that allow that to happen. Metal detectors, whether you're at the airport or just looking at the beach with a personal one, metal detectors will look to see if there's any attraction between the, the magnets in the machines themselves and whatever is going through. So if you're walking through, they will see if there's any attraction between that magnet and what they're noticing um, that maybe you're wearing. Um, cabinets or door latches. So a lot of times um, things will close using magnets like cabinet doors or um, like freezer doors. Um, take a look the next time you're in your kitchen to see if you can find any magnets on any doors. Cranes, oh my goodness, cranes are pretty obvious. If you look up there, that's just a giant magnet, guys. That's pretty amazing. And so it just goes down over a pile of whatever it needs and it will attract anything that is magnetic and it will pull it up and then it will move it where it needs to go. Watches and clocks. Um, watches and clocks have magnets inside of them. They are what helps move those hands. Um, learning and art boards, you may have used these when you were little. Um, obviously, boards are magnetic. Then there are magnets that can be um, attracted to the board. Um, a compass, we learned about this yesterday, um, or maybe two days ago. Um, but we learned that our compass will point north. Um, people used it for exploring. We know that it helps us navigate the world because the world is a magnet. Pretty amazing stuff. The maglev train. Oh my gosh, this is super cool, guys. So the magnet train or maglev train, sorry, actually uses um, magnets in a cool way. This um, track right here is magnetic and the bottom of the um, train is magnetic and they're like poles. Okay, so they are not attracted to each other. They're repelling, but they're repelling just a little bit, which makes that maglev train look like it's floating. How cool is that? Roller coasters, roller coasters use magnets. They use them to speed up. They use them to slow down. It's pretty awesome. MRI machines, um, an MRI machine uses magnets to be able to, um, and radio waves, to be able to um, get pictures of what your insides look like. If you have something going on, doctors can um, take an MRI of your, um, whatever your injury is. I know that I had surgery um, on my knee when I was in seventh grade, eighth grade maybe, and I had to have an MRI done. And so you just kind of go in the tube like that little guy, and they will um, use magnets to be able to take those pictures. It's pretty amazing. Magnets truly are everywhere. So your assignment today is you have an, a short reading. It's not even one whole page. One short reading and I believe five multiple choice questions to answer for me. Have a great day.